Mr. Fuju, for me, it's very important to meet you, finally now, uh, as you are for me somebody like an uncle from a little bit far family, because for so long you are joining some of my uh, plans and thinkings, inner dialogues, etc. Uh -huh. Uh, for example, as you have quite a lot of stories about weddings. Yes. Uh, when I got married with my wife, we are living together for 11 years now, when we have been preparing our weddings, we break several rules just to do it uh, comfortable for ourselves yeah. and for our friends as well. Yeah. And the beginning was in some stories you wrote. Ah. Books. So thank you very much and I'm happy to meeting you. My pleasure. Oh yeah. I think there's many people who are telling you something like that. Yes. Touching the personal lives. Yes, people stopping in the street this morning and said you know, that something like this. And so that makes me feel very good. Okay. Uh, if I tell a story and someone takes that story into their life and it affects their life and then they pass the story on, that's success. What is great, what I like on your books very much and definitely I'm not alone, this is the fact that I'm not only getting information about your heroes or about people whom you are talking about, but I got information about you. Mm -hmm. You have courage to say even your mistakes, yeah. even the things you don't know how to handle them. Uh -huh. So uh, we are reading it and sharing our lives with you. That's, that's important. Well, I write as though I'm writing to a friend, not to an audience, but to a oh, friend. Okay. That's it. That's saying hello, and this is what's going on, and have you noticed this, and did you see that, and oh my God, this, and it's very personal. Uh, here in this book, uh, the Czech translation is Achio. Uh, uh oh, in English. Uh -oh, yeah. yeah. There is, uh, I find a place and just sign it, it's on the page 80, uh, that some journalists have been asking you if you believe in God. Yes. And you said that you believe in Howard. Do <laughs> you remember that story? Yes. People, well, just recently, I had a funny thing happen here on that, on that topic. There were four young women singing in uh, Namaste Miru. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were singing in English. And so I went closer to hear them, and one of them came closer to me and said, have you found God? And I said, is God lost? And she said, what? She said, no, 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 I mean, have you found Jesus? I said, he, is he lost too? And she didn't laugh. But you, you, you understand why that's funny, but she was very serious. You know? She has been uh, fully yeah. deep in yeah, the yeah. I think she was a Mormon missionary. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. So, but she didn't know what to say. Is he missing? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think there's mention that even some of your relatives, his name was Howard. Yes. So, uh, well, then it's a real sign to do a mission work. Yes, yes, a sign from whatever. <laughs> uh, but what happened that you one time decided that you are no Howard anymore? Or you are not cooperating on that mission? Well, when I was young, my idea of God was very small. God was watching me all the time. My mother said, He's, God is always watching you. So I had this notion of just above my head, there was an old man watching me. And then slowly I got a larger view of God, what that word means. So now, uh, in my, I'm 83 this year. Finally I began to understand that that's a finger pointing at a much larger uh, in, it's a word we have to use because we are so small and it's so big. So I, it's not that I be, don't believe in God or don't believe, my idea of what that means is so much larger. And now, because I read quantum physics, mm -hmm. I'm interested in multiple universes. Yes. So if you say, this is, we are one universe and many universes, is God the God of that universe and that one and that one? <laughs> the, the mystery gets bigger. Isn't it strange that now it's getting uh, have just a basement in physics? Yeah. I would expect it probably in any any other kind of science, but in physics? Yes. But it yes. is like that. I have a friend who's the head of the French Physics Institute in Strasbourg. And I said, give me something visual to think about. So he said, you know bubble wrap? You know, we used to wrap the plastic like that. He says, the multiple universes are like bubble wrap. And they're not connected, but they're all separate. But, and I said, oh my God, what happens if you step on one? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I, I met in Nepal. I met Afghan uh, seller of carpets. Uh -huh. I like one carpet very much, uh -huh. so I've been attending it a few days. Yeah. Every day people come to me and say, well, don't, don't be in a hurry, man. Just enjoy my cup of tea. Yeah. And let's talk. Yeah. And maybe that during some talks we will find the best carpet for you and we will find the best price for you and me as well. Yeah. And we have been talking about everything. Yeah. About girls, about yeah. uh, what. And he was Muslim. Uh -huh. and he had a great parallel as he told me, you know, we are now in Pokhara. And if you and me wants to get to Kathmandu, there is many ways to Kathmandu. Yes. We all want to get there. Yes, yes. This is why I like the Hindu religion. There are many, many images of what God might be, including Ganesh, this fat with the belly, a head of an elephant, uh, dancing. And you think, what kind of religion has a God that has a head of an elephant that dances on one foot? Well, it's all in your imagination of what you need to understand about the mystery. Mm -hmm. huh? It was, even when His Holiness Dalai Lama has been here in Europe, yeah. uh, people have been talking with him about Buddhist places in Europe, yeah. and uh, it surprised me that he said, well, usually I'm uh, not too happy when I see Christian places in India and Buddhist places in Europe, uh -huh. as there, is no, there are no roots for that. Yeah. Usually it's better if the Christianity yeah. is in Christian Europe and the Buddhism is in yeah. those places. It means that he's very open to the real meaning of ecumenism. Yes, yes, yes. It must be a strange thing to be the Dalai Lama, to know that a bunch of old monks found you when you were a baby and said you are going to be the reincarnation. He will not be going to Chechia. He, I don't know where he will be going. I like very much as he has, uh, anytime he's talking about himself, uh -huh. he really counts all his reincarnations. Yes. So he can say, well, this is one moment that I did in 13th century. Yes, yes. yes. He really feels yeah. it as a yeah. all the yeah. time. Yes, yeah. no. so, He's a very deep, rich man, mm -hmm. and I admire him. Uh, I hope he I hope he gets to go back to Tibet before he dies, but oh, I don't know. It would be great. Yeah. But it's very difficult to imagine it. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have a book which is focused on rituals. And on rituals we have in our lives. Yeah. And it was kind of a surprise for me. As I like rituals all around the world and I see any of them, I'm trying to understand its, its role, its importance. Mm -hmm. And for many years I have been thinking that the rituals in Europe are missing. That we are not having our rituals. That we just... Uh, and we just don't believe the rituals. We even don't believe the Christmas. We think it's only a festival of consumerism and of spending yeah. money. Yeah. It's everything over. We are not uh, getting married. We are just out of all rituals, but we need them for yes. our lives. And in your books, you look at it from the opposite side. You said, well, the rituals are everywhere in our lives. Yes. I like that approach very much. Yes, there are patterns of every day of making the day familiar. So we get up in a certain way and we have a habit. We call it habits, but in fact it is rituals. It's what we do to know, make sure the day goes well. And if something goes wrong, like if there is no hot water, the ritual is all in a mess. Because we depend on the fact that in the morning I wash my hands with soap and water and my towel. That's a ritual. It makes me feel like my day has a pattern that I can depend on. And uh, we're just not uh, aware of that. There are, there are rituals of non-rituals. For example, if, if you don't celebrate Christmas, you do something else yes. instead. Uh, and, yeah, and as I know the date, yeah. it again means some kind of ritual. Yes, yes, yes. So it's much more subtle. Uh, but I'm, the Czechs are just as full of rituals as anyone else, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't understand some of the rituals. Why would you eat a carp for Christmas? Well, we can't say the answer. Well, yeah. Did anybody answer you that? No, well, they say, I don't eat it. I put it in the river. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they say that it, it, it used to be a cheap fish. So yeah. It was possible yeah. for almost everybody. Yeah. To yeah. Just yeah. eat at least on Christmas. So my, I have friends who buy it and put it in the bathtub for the children to play with, and then it disappears. Yeah. 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 I had it 
Uh, of course, from my childhood, I thought that all people around the world eat, eat. hard. Yeah. <laughs> how, how other they should do that, because yeah. this is the habit. Yeah. And the, through the years, I recognize that it's not like that. No. And uh, maybe you remember it a few years ago. It it was just normal that before Christmas, on the streets, there had been just places where people on the streets had been selling the cars. Yeah, big, big tubs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and there was uh, just iced water on the ground and yeah. iced blood on the yeah, ground yeah. and it was terrible. It yeah. was just killing, yes, killing yeah. on the ordinary place. In order to honor Jesus, we will kill a fish. Yeah, or cut down, a, kill a tree, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, we are killing the trees. And I have been just standing, uh, watching the queue of the people, and there have been just small TV crew, uh, uh -huh. some English-speaking people, and they asked me, well, can you tell me what do you think about this strange killing here on the streets? I said, okay, uh, we Czechs, when celebrate anything, we need to kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> they really started me. <laughs> but you know, in every country, all over the world, at a certain time of the year, we eat certain food. Mm -hmm. And I was in Thailand, and uh, way up in the villages, at a wedding. And to celebrate the wedding, they have small puppies, little dogs, that are raised only to eat, not to not for pets, uh -huh. and so when they came for the feast, here's this puppies cooked puppies, and they asked me if I could would I like to have some puppy, uh -huh. and I said I, I can't do it. And they said, well, what do you eat? And I said, well, I eat cows. You eat cows? My God, are you crazy? Because they treat the cows like pets, and they uh -huh. live. You know, it's so it's all it's always different. But I have actually eaten puppy. <laughs> uh -huh. So. What I know was trying to shape in my head uh, in these books, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Manner of Destinies, and how you translate the name of the strange name of the Nine Dragons and a Sheep. Okay. It is the name of a pub. I, I, know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Nine Dragons and a Sheep. I think that you show just patient understanding for women who don't want to get married. Yes. Who yeah. want to live by themselves very freely, even in sexual field. Tell me more about this. I would expect from you that just you would enjoy if they respect the rules and don't break them. In the West, the place of the woman in the culture is changing very quickly. And women are want, want to be equal with men. And so I want to honor that and say, this is not a bad way to think. It is a way to say we are men and women uh, should be res both respected. So the women uh, in this book all are very strong women, independent women, and they can make love and they can make war. <laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah, uh, it, but it's a recognition on my part of the changing position of women in the culture. One friend of mine is archaeologist, and he told me that the approach and relation to women shows the level of development of society. Yes. The higher it is, uh, the, the development the higher it is, the better is relation to women, and the more, the more they are just free, they can do what they want. And it's not first time in history when it's growing. Yes, it yes. And, and it's growing in the West, but uh, in the East, well, only now, just this last year, can women in Saudi Arabia drive a car. And they still are covered like this. So in some places, it changes a long way away. Uh, but in the West, in the Czech Republic, women, the status of women has come up to equal with men. How is it in comparison with the United States? Because the United States are traditional. Uh, well, a lot. we thought, I thought, that we would have a woman president, that, that Hillary Clinton oh, would be president. So close. Yeah, I bet money on this. I lost money on that bet. And uh, I couldn't believe that after Obama, we would have Trump. I, I, I cannot believe it still. Every time I look at the news, I say, this is not true. It cannot be true, but it is. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, uh, one friend of mine is playing in orchestra, and they have been looking for a trumpet player. <laughs> and he put on Facebook, we are looking for, for trumpetists. <laughs> and they declined to publish it. <laughs> 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 really, it was yeah. because he asked why. Yeah. They explained that because of a parallel is a Trump. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. President. Yeah. Yeah. I remember now that we got out from my question about the position of women in the United States. Mm. 
But I, I think that in Czech Republic uh, we are very liberal. Yes. Uh, that ladies have yeah. really many rights, many opportunities to live their lives. Yes. Is it similar in the United States? Yes, it's going, going very strong. If you look at the candidates mm -hmm. to be president next time who are Democrats, five of them are women. Okay. Now, I don't know if we will elect a woman, but I mean, the English ha elected a woman, and uh, in, in India there was a woman, and the Germans have a woman. Why not Americans? But we haven't got there yet. Okay. I would like to see Michelle Obama, Obama be the president. Right. And so many people like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she, she was very smart, she was very beautiful, very intelligent. But she does, she will not run for office. Okay, maybe we will see how the situation will develop at all. <laughs> As all the world is just somehow polarizing. Yes. In India, so understandable, so free, so open country as India. Yeah. And I have been there one month ago, and they told me that even in India, people start to ask, "Well, on what kind of religion you are? What yeah. kind of openings do you have?" Yeah. I can't believe it. The circle goes round and round and round. Yeah. Do you agree that our Civilization is getting down, and there will be some huge no, transformation. It's, it's getting better and worse at the same time. So both, <laughs> it's getting wider. Yes, it's getting wider. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I in years past, to go back to politics, we had maybe one or two candidates for president who were Democrat, and one or two were. Now we have 15 for Democrat, and they've, and they've incredibly width of things they stand for. How it would come down, I don't know, but. It, it's getting wider because more people can know what's going on because of the little phone that they hold in their hand. You can know everything out of that. I'm still thinking about the United States and about your topics in your books. Even these novels have been published in the United States. No. 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 I am, uh, in my country, um, publishing has been taken over almost entirely by Amazon. Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with them. And because they sell books very cheap, then the publisher doesn't get much, and then the author doesn't get much. And Amazon has a control. And they will say, yes, we think that book can be published, so do it. But we won't pay you very much. And so I have stopped publishing books in English. I have now nine books in the Czech Republic, in Czech, because there is still a, people still read books, and people still, my publisher still reads books. And uh, it's like publishing used to be. It's about reading and about people. So these books, there's one more, this is a trilogy, yeah. uh, are a long story, but only in Czech. Only in Czech, no, no other languages. Mm -hmm. You are a cultural immigrant. <laughs> Welcome to <in> my country. <laughs> well, for 30 years, from the time I was 50 until now, uh, I was on the, what I think of as the fame train. You know, you, and it's exhausting, and it doesn't make your life any better to just do that all the time. So now I live a much quieter life, and I get to write. Uh, and then once a, every year, I come to the Czech Republic for a month, mm -hmm. and I'm Mr. Kindergarten again, and famous and all that, and then I go home, and I am nobody. Oh, so you can enter your uh, fame? Yeah. Enjoy it? Yes. Uh, wow. And then go home. Yeah. And then go home, yeah. 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 It's very comfortable, I guess. Yes, it's a nice, that's the best for me. Well, I live in a town that where 5,000 people, a village, and the people they must know you as well. Well, they know me, but they don't bother me. They don't ask for autographs or anything. I'm just one of the people who live, and so I've, I'm treated very, very nicely, just like a person, like I was maybe a person. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Your books have been published by in thirty languages, in thirty countries. Thirty languages. In 30 languages. And one hundred and twenty-one countries. Oh. Yeah, there we are. I have. Uh, a, a room half this big with all the books from all over the world and all the languages. And my son, so who, who, when I die, he will he take care of this. I said, what am I supposed to do with this? I said, call the garbage company yes. and take it away. I don't know. Uh, what do you feel when you see it? Pardon? When you see the bookcase, full of your books, what do you feel? Uh, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I don't, one of the odd things about uh, selling a book to another country is that you never meet the translator. You never know. All of them. I never meet any of them. The only translator I have ever met is in the Czech Republic. And he has been the same translator for all the books from the beginning. I went to the zoo with him yesterday. Okay. And I knew him before he was married. 
and then I knew him when he got married, and then when he had babies, and yesterday his two daughters, who are now six, 18 and six, 16, went to the zoo with me. So it, he has been, it's like family. So with him you are a real uncle? Yeah, yeah, I'm a real uncle. And, but he's the only translator I ever met. No, any, no, no. Mm. And it's odd, they never, I always say when they buy my book in another country, I am available if the translator wants to ask, what did I mean, or what did I think, or is there another way? N never. Even no questions to mm, Never. No. Isn't it strange? <laughs> yeah, it is. And sometimes when people who read, well, for example, um, the, my, the kindergarten book was bought in, for Israel, and it was translated, and someone who speaks English and speaks Hebrew read it and said it was terrible, it was awful, it was like the person didn't even read my book. But I have no control over that. That's the problem of the... And in Japan, the translator is, doesn't really do the translation. He is hired as a university professor, distinguished, older man, and then he gets his students to do the work. So you'd never know who's actually translating the books. It's very, every country has a different system. It's very interesting. But here there is one man and his wife who is the voice of Robert Fulcher. And it must be very interesting if you see that your books, even the kindergarten book, which is, I think, probably the number one in yeah. the list of your the most, yeah. that they, well, work around the world, but you cannot recognize in concrete what kind is your book published in this particular yeah. country? No, it's a mystery, I, and there's nothing I can do about it. So, Well, I can. I ask people who are bilingual mm -hmm. to read and tell me if it's a good translation. Okay. And so far, most of them have been good. The Japanese especially, the Korean, the Chinese, the Taiwan, uh, the ones in uh, Europe, the French, n not so good. Uh, so I, I can find out, but I can't read the languages. So I but what I feel is a very good news, because your books are about kindness, about listening, trying to understand each other, mm. trying to understand even the mistakes of the others, as we all are mistaking, that this is something we people as a mankind have it in common. Yeah. We all need it. Yeah, yeah. I say in a lot of my books, I write about the dark side of things, death and failure and stuff like that. And I, I know, I understand the dark side of being human. But that doesn't mean that that's what I want to say is the best side of being human. So I want to say, yes, I know that, but look at this. Uh, I, I like being in the Czech Republic because of the old people, people in their 90s. And uh, when I think about what they have been through, and that they are still strong. Uh, there's an old lady on a bus, and you're supposed to get up for older people. She's sitting, she sees me, she gets up and says, please sit down. She's 90, you know, but she has this young heart that says, you are a stranger, have my seat. That's very Czech. Did you see? Oh yeah, and then I have put her on my knees. Really? And she laughed. And you started to talk, I'm Yeah, sure. yeah, and there was a man who, sp who spoke English and Czech, and so we talked to each other. And, All right. and, uh, it was very funny because because she is old and very short, her breasts are down here now. Yes. So when I pulled her onto my lap, I grabbed her breasts and she goes, ah! <laughs> but she said. <laughs> you, you mentioned in the novels that the question of age is not a question about number of years. Yeah, it's a question no. about decisions. No, there's a discussion between Uncle Peter and Madam Silver, and they say, you know, it's a matter of attitude, not years. And I think this is very true. I know, I have many friends my age who are old people now. Mm -hmm. They have decided that they are old, that they're I like... a friend of my age. Yeah, who are yeah. Really old. I'm retired, it's done, finished, I'm done, nothing more. I, and it's not, not my way. So. I was probably 17 when I have read your kindergarten book. Really? And it was very important for me to assure me on some yeah. things. Yeah. I thought that something should be like this, even if it's not so usual to be shared among the people. Yeah. But I thought that it's supposed to be like that. And when I have read your book, I said, well, I felt that it should be something like yeah. this. And it was very comfortable. Yes. At 17, we assured about these things. Well, I said to, to people uh, that this is not original with me. I simply said out loud what everybody has learned in their own life. You know that it is better to do this than to do that since you were this big. Mm -hmm. Don't hit people. It's, you know, 
It's don't lie. It's very simple. And if you know those things, then you, your life will go well. And the older I am, I can confirm that it's really profitable. Yes. It's more useful, more efficient, yes. more profitable yes. to don't yes. lie. Yes. I don't have to remember all these yeah, situations. Exactly. I can use the space of my brain for many other things yeah. than to still be thinking, well, he knows that I did that, he doesn't know it, so I should say it like that. Wow. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, no. No, people ask me, do I still think all I really need to know I learned in kindergarten? And I say, of course not. There are a lot of things I wanted to know. But the basic things of running a life have not changed. Mm -hmm. I can say it in a different language. I can say it in very complicated language. But it hasn't changed, the, the basics. So. Yeah. There have been some kind of uh, questionnaire among Czechs uh, about uh, believing each other. Mm. And the result was quite bad. It was that we don't believe each other. Right. Is well, there something you would say? Don't no. worry, believe. Don't no, no, what, no, what no, 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 no. There is an old saying from Las Vegas. It says, trust the dealer, but always cut the cards. <laughs> And trust the, uh, your horse, but always tie him up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can see both ways, uh, to trust and to also to be careful. Because I think that you believe that people are good in general. Well, most people have something good in them. There are some really awful people, but you know, people with guns and killing lots of people, but it, it, we cannot run our lives by what we see in the newspaper every day or on the television news, because that's all the bad news. How many people got killed? How many people were hit by a truck? But it doesn't say, Here's the news. Uh, millions of people got up, did their job, were kind, went home, went to bed, and did it again the next day. <laughs> But that's not news. You know? But it's news. But it's the truth. Let's start today. Let's start today. Uh, the news. We will say that uh, 99% of people have been all right, yeah. enjoying the day. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about this one person. Yeah. About the troublemakers. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Or I would love to see a headline: Nothing really interesting happened today. Yeah. But I like it very much. You know, for example, as it on cigarettes. Yeah. Careful, the smoking is killing. Yeah. You're be careful. Yeah. Uh, the informations are just uh, poisoning your your thoughts. Exactly. Don't don't forget that most of the people are all right. Yes. <laughs> This yes. is only about the troubles. Yes. 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 No. No. No, I, when I look at the, the Google News every day, I would say half of it is about somebody who died in a strange way. Oh. You know, they fell out of an airplane, they were blown up by... But that's not news, that's just the that's this strange edge of reality. And I saw it every day when our uh, news uh, broadcasting in the evening has 45 minutes. Uh -huh. so I can't believe that in our country can happen so many things every day yeah. to cover 45 minutes yeah. of, yeah. of yeah. broadcasting. No. no, no. No, it would be nice if they say, we, well, we only have 10 minutes today. Yeah. But we can add, don't forget that Robert Fulton say yeah. most of the people are all right. Yeah. Now yeah. watch the TV. Yeah. <laughs> most of the people who were alive this morning are alive today. Including you. If you're watching the TV, you are live. It's going net tomorrow. It's not a good news. Yeah, it's not a good news. No. Thank you very much for the interview. It's my, it's my pleasure. Thank you for talking about things I like to talk about. Oh. And you have been talking about zoo. You have been yesterday. In yes. How yeah. did you like it there? I, I would tell you a zoo story. Okay. When I was here the year that the zoo was completely flooded and yes. all the animals died and it was terrible and... Uh, the, that came the next year, and my editor at Argo, who is a wonderful woman with great imagination, she gave me three little pieces of paper folded, said, pick one, and we will do that. So I opened one, and it said, we are going to the zoo. And I said, there's nothing at the zoo. She said, oh, there's all these cages, and there are unicorns, and there are mermaids, and there are dinosaurs, and there are dragons, and... You just have to imagine the zoo. So we went to the zoo, and we went from cage to cage and cage, and we were talking out loud. Look, there's a unicorn. I didn't know the unicorns were blue. And so they said, the people standing behind us saying, what? <laughs> and we, we laughed at a wonderful time. So I came home, and I had two more pieces of paper. So I opened both of them, and it said, to the zoo. <laughs> She was very clever. That was a beautiful story. So yesterday... 
We went to the zoo to see the new unicorns, and they found them in South America, and they are black and white striped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you seen them? Yeah, we saw them, yeah, yeah. And some of the other people saw them too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>